This is an interview with Mrs. Paula Feige about her experiences in the West African Smallpox Eradication Project. The interview is being conducted at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention in Atlanta, Georgia on July 13, 2006. This is a part of the 40th anniversary reunion of the West African Smallpox Eradication Project. The interviewer is Victoria Hardin. Mrs. Feige, could we start uh, by your telling me briefly um, your childhood, a little bit about your childhood mm -hmm. and pre-college education and uh, growing up and what influenced your, um, your thoughts about what you should do in life? Mm -hmm. Well, um, I was born in Chicago, Illinois, and my family moved uh, when I was four years old to um, Los Gatos, California, and those are my early memories then of that. It was a very simple time. Um, my father was a salesman, and he traveled to San Francisco um, every Monday and came back every Friday. and. Um, I just remember it as uh, a quiet uh, time with neighbors and going to school, small schools. Um, then from there we moved three different times in California and ended up in Palo Alto where I went to high school. Um, remind me again what the... Well, uh, just I'm tr I'm trying to establish if there were any particular people in your mm -hmm. life, your mother, mm -hmm. uh, ministers, mm -hmm. teachers, mm -hmm. anybody who mm -hmm. inspired you as mm -hmm. to what you might want to be. Right. Um, I think my teachers very much inspired me. Um, from my very first memories, I wanted to be a teacher, and um, back then. Um, there weren't that many uh, vocations that were actually available for, for uh, women, but that was always my, uh, my love and my goal. I loved children. At a very early age, I would babysit and play school, and um, so that's, that's where uh, I would say my teachers. Um, my mother was a stay-at-home mother, and um, my uh, very closest friend, her parents were very influential. Uh, they had come from Norway, and my friend had three sisters, and I would say I spent the majority of my time there at her house. Tell me about going to college and how you met your mm -hmm. husband. Well, uh, I went off to college. Uh, I thought my uh, grandfather was a minister, and um, we were uh, involved in the Lutheran Church, and my older brother, by three years, he went to a Lutheran college in Minnesota, and uh, I decided I would like to do that also, but I didn't want to go to the same college he did. And so we had taken a family vacation up to the Pacific Northwest, and uh, I really just loved it. And so um, the Pacific Lutheran College was in Tacoma and uh, that's where I chose to go. It's surprising to me that I did that because I was a very shy child and uh, to make a complete break from home and family was not characteristic of me. But uh, so I got on the airplane, took off by myself, got a taxi when I arrived and um, went off to school where well, I think two days later I met Bill. And he stood out because he was so tall. He was a senior, I was a freshman, and uh, was a prankster even then. And we had been to some um, parties where you get to know other people. And uh, he was not supposed to be there. The parties were for freshmen. And he was um, casing out the girls, <laughs> the new girls coming in with the freshman year. And so I met him. Uh, didn't actually meet him at that party, but he stood out. And um, later on that week, at uh, coming out from the cafeteria, he um, was with some of his friends, and they had bets going on. I bet you can't date the first woman who comes out the door, and it happened to be me. <laughs> and so I said, no, you know, I don't know why I did. I just said no, I, that I couldn't do that. And he kind of followed me home and um, made friends with my roommate, and I finally did date him then. And um, I was only 18 years old. 
Mm -hmm. When did you all marry? We married when I was 20, so two years later. Um, quite surprising to me, my parents said yes and had no objections. And Bill was, had uh, completed one year of medical school. I'd completed two years of college. And so uh, we married um, December 23rd, because it was the only day he could make it, and um, moved up to Seattle and finished my undergraduate degree in uh, University of Washington while he was going to medical school. Now, I have just talked with him, mm -hmm. and uh, he was telling me a little about your moving around. When he finished medical school, mm -hmm. he came down here to do uh, the EIS training at mm -hmm. the TEC, and then he went to, to Harvard to get a uh, degree in Master's of Public Health. Mm -hmm. uh, what was it like for you, and mm -hmm. I believe you had a child mm -hmm. at some point along the mm -hmm. way. Um, our son David was born when he was an EIS officer in Denver, and uh, those were very quiet years, very simple compared to now. Um, I had taught a year before David was born and then decided I would like to stay home with the children, which um, I did. Um, it was uh, somewhat difficult moving around because it was hard to have sustained friendships. But uh, with the children then that made it easy because we would meet, um, I would meet other mothers with children the same age. Um, at, at that point. Mm -hmm. Now, um, it shifted pretty dramatically though, didn't mm -hmm. it, when mm -hmm. he went to Nigeria mm -hmm. and you all were living in, mm -hmm. uh, a, he said, a very uh, mm -hmm. small village. Mm -hmm. Tell me about living in a small village mm -hmm. and having a toddler. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, um, it was good I was young because we just uh, stepped right into it and um, and just accepted it. It w the, the people were um, of the village were just so kind to us. Um, we would go to a market and people would walk up to us and give us, you know, like sixpence, or, uh, which was just amazing to me because they had nothing. Um, we didn't have that much ourselves. We were missionaries at the time, but we did compare it to uh, the people of the village. Um, it was extremely hot. We had no electricity. And um, I think, well, even even in the cool season, the lowest temperature was probably 75 degrees at night, and the humidity was very high. And we all, we slept under mosquito nets, which was difficult because it was so hot and so. Where did you get your water? Uh, oh my goodness, we hired uh, a young man. That's all he did all day was he had uh, two five-gallon drums or ten-gallon drums, I can't remember, on each side of his bicycle. And he would bicycle out to the water hole and bring water back for us. And then it wasn't fit to drink, it wasn't even fit to uh, wash in. And so we had um, a stove which was uh, propane and it went all day long boiling water. So not only was it hot to begin with and high humidity humidity to begin with, but also we had this added to the house all day long as well. And I presume if you had to go get your water, you didn't have any sewage systems or indoor no. plumbing for toilets. No, no. There was an outhouse, and um, I did not use it. We had um, a, a special little potty situation set up in the house, and then we would deposit it out in the outhouse. How about your child? What was it like having a baby? Um, David was two at the time, and um, believe it or not, it wasn't difficult. Uh, he played with the children in the village. Um, he taught them little sayings. We were, the reason we were living in the village was to try to learn the local language. And uh, he taught them little sa sayings in English. Um, I can't remember what it was. There was something about a, uh, a cereal um, that we would see the advertisement on television before we came and we went out one day and all these little children were sitting on the ground and they were going, we want Cheerios or something of that sort. Um, so the children had no problems communicating with each other as children do. They just play together. Were you lonely? Yes. Yes. Lonely for friends uh, your own age? Yes. Uh -huh. And lonely for family. And lonely for family. Yes. Uh-huh. 
um, it was a situation in which we were together as a family all day long, so that was helpful. Um, Bill and I would go to language lessons together. There were other missionaries in the area that didn't live in our village but lived in other villages. So we would, get, we would all get together for our language lessons, and uh, that was helpful. And now, as the uh, political situation mm -hmm. started heating up, mm -hmm. uh, you and your son, I believe, mm -hmm. moved to Lagos, mm -hmm. and then Bill had to get out yes. fairly suddenly. Right. Uh, how worrisome is all this for you at this time? Well, while we were in Anugu, um, and people were so kind to us, it was not uh, frightening. Um, there was high sentiment against the English at that time, but not against Americans. So um, we felt quite comfortable. When we were evacuated, um, we at this time then we were actually Bill was actually working for the smallpox program, and um, he was on loan from the mission, so that we had made close friends Dave and Joanne Thompson and. Paul and Mary Litchfield, and uh, the women and the children were all evacuated together. And Bill describes, uh, perhaps he did in his interview, how he watched the airplane because we were, every seat in the plane was taken up with a mother and a child or two. And so we were heavily weighted down. So he watched the airplane like slowly, slowly try to gather um, height. And uh, then we were only in Lagos for a short period of time before we were evacuated to the States. So it was difficult leaving our husbands behind and not knowing exactly what was going to happen, exactly what was going on. Um, I, had, I had faith in, you know, that Bill would handle himself well. And I know he told you how he went back and forth between the two um, fighting areas. Yes. Well, it's fine, and if, okay. if you're not hearing from me the question you need, just bring it up. Okay. <laughs> now, when you came back to the States, mm -hmm. if I am correct, it was the summer of 1966, mm -hmm. and uh, you all were delighted that you were coming back to civilization. Only mm -hmm. when you got to New York, you found out it was having <laughs> some problems. Do you right. want to tell me that story? Well, we had... Um, as I say, the, there were, I don't, I can't, I, how many women and children there were, I don't know, but a, a good many, I would say probably 80. And um, we had to, uh, the, the, air, the um, airlines, I, I can't remember exactly what the story was then, but we couldn't fly straight because you, you, the pilot could only fly so many hours. So we hopped from country to country at trying to find, I think it was a second pilot, so that they could then take the long journey across the ocean. And um, then once we, we had, our first stop was Puerto Rico, and uh, we all had to get out of the plane, we all had to get, gather our luggage and go through customs. And uh, by then, our um, nerves were pretty frayed, you know, children were crying, everybody was tired, and um, people were complaining, you know, why do we have to do this and whatnot. And uh, my thought at that time, I had, um, we had two children at that time, our next son was born, happened to be when we were in the States, but while we were still over there. So he, uh, I have, you know, one child on my hip and another one making sure he stays close to me and gathering all our luggage and trying to get all our papers together and whatnot. And uh, Bill had already done much, much traveling around the world at this time. And I, my thought was, well, this is one place I've been that Bill hasn't been. So <laughs> it was worth it. <laughs> and then when we arrived in um, New York, we were put up in a hotel, it was, it was summertime and it was hot, and we were put up in a hotel that the air conditioning system was broken, but the heating system wasn't. <laughs> and so it must have been like 100 degrees in our uh, hotel room. And then the next day we all scattered out to our separate homes. I understand that was a problem with the bus. Was this the same trip? I don't think that was the same trip. I think that was a different trip. I know it was because Bill was along 
where uh, did Bill tell you that trip? That yes, he yes. was telling me some about it. I thought I might hear it from your side, yes. your perspective. But well, we we arrived in uh, again. It was New York, and um, the bus that we were put on was not working properly, and so they asked. They put us all on the bus, and they couldn't get the bus started, and so they asked the men to all get off the bus. So all the men got off the bus. Here again, it was like 90 degrees and probably midnight, and uh, all the men then were to push the bus so it could get a jump start, and uh, we got on, and um, they went a, a ways, and. Um, the man did the driver did not have enough gas in the bus and it was do you stop or do you go do you stop and not be able to get the bus started again or do you just go and run out of gas and so um, he finally decided he needed to stop for gas and filled up and then they couldn't get the bus started again so they sent they were trying to get us to our hotel so they sent out um, different cars and small buses to pick us up and they said all the men go on this side and all the women and children go over here and I was like the way this trip has been going. I'm not being <laughs> separated from my husband. So I think they took all the women and all the men and me and the children in another vehicle. Of these things, they don't prepare you in college for this kind no, of thing. No, they do they? don't, no. <laughs> um, after you came back here in Atlanta, mm -hmm. then did you all go back to Africa mm -hmm. during the Duration During of the, the smallpox mm -hmm. uh, program. Well, we went back for the relief uh, program, and um, I, if I recall correctly, I don't think Bill was involved in smallpox at that point. I think he was just in, uh, involved with the relief work. Oh, this was the um, survey of malnutrition. Yes. yes. Uh huh. Yes. Right. And, and you went with him. And we children. went with him. Um, to me, an interesting point on that is that we started off in the village with no electricity, no running water, um, under mosquito nets, um, really fairly um, unsophisticated uh, situation. And w then we moved to Anugu, and we lived in um, a very small flat. And then we had electricity. We didn't have any. We had running water and electricity. We didn't have. Um, uh, air conditioning as our salary was paid by the mission field and not by CDC and then from and, and that was a very nice I, I missed one step uh, first in the village then we were in our village compound uh, our um, mission compound where we had only running water and then to Anugu where we had running water and electricity and then finally to Lagos where we had we were staying in somebody's apartment who was on leave and we had uh, it was it was very luxurious for us so we had uh, very um, different living experiences in our two years in Nigeria. Did you have servants at it, any point? I know you did not in originally. Uh, we did originally. Okay. We had um, uh, his name was Lawrence and uh, he, he did um, the cleaning and the washing. I did the cooking but he did uh, really everything else. Um, he was a wonderful young man. When he first met us, he thought we were brother and sister and that we were just children they, we, because we were so young at the time. So uh, he was a dear man and um, really, really special with our children. I understand that it's uh, kind of difficult for Americans in many ways when they come to Africa, some people feel very unsettled about having all these servants. Mm -hmm. They don't feel like they deserve them. Mm -hmm. And other people feel like, gee, this is great. Why mm -hmm. should I go home? Mm -hmm. Do you, did you <laughs> see all of this? Um, well, I, th I was so grateful for Lawrence to help me. Um, I don't think I could have managed everything on my own the way it was. And then he came with us when we went to Anugu. So he was with us for... Um, Mm, just about two years. Um, I, you know, it, it, I was grateful for him and I didn't feel um, embarrassed or guilty to have him working with us. He became like a member of our family, really. He was um, probably only about five years younger than we were at the time. Um, then when then he followed us to a new goose, so uh, he worked there too. I continued to do the cooking, which was no small feat. 
uh, because everything was made from scratch. And uh, he baked the bread for me. But other than that, I did my own cooking. And then when we were in Nugu, I mean in Lagos, we did not have servants. There was really no need for it. What was very difficult for me was re-entering the United States. Why, um, why was that difficult? Well, I was prepared for the culture shock in going to Lagos, and I mean in going to Nigeria. And um, I don't think we really, other than the loneliness, we really suffered much from culture shock. I was not prepared for the culture shock in coming back to the U.S. where everything is at your fingertips. Everything is um, really almost overwhelming, just bombards you. you. We had a nice quiet life. Uh, you know, Bill worked hard. He traveled a good deal. Um, and and that, could, that was difficult for us as a family. But um, life was sweet and slow and uh, people were were very generous with, to us, with us, and to us, very, very friendly. And uh, I found in coming back, you don't just step right back into your old life. People have gone on, and uh, it takes a while to fit yourself, you find yourself back in again. you impatient with people in the United States because when they complain, for example? I suppose, yes. Um, People at first had an interest in what our life was like, but they were soon, you know, back to, it was almost, you know, like sweep it under the rug um, kind of attitude. Uh, and of course they had, they had not had the experiences that we had. So, you know, you tell a few stories and, um, and then it's on to, to life as usual. Um, How would you characterize uh, the impact that this, these experiences had on your family mm. and yourself? It, it certainly made a difference in our lives. Um, we, our oldest son still remembers and, and the children had a later experience in, in India so that um, perhaps impacted you know the two situations together then made it even stronger but um, our older son was four when we came back home so that's still you know quite uh, quite young but he does remember a good deal and how uh, how other people live what other cultures are like what other religions are um, compared to your own I would say it gave our children uh, tolerance for different styles of living, different um, religions, certainly um, the impact of poverty compared to what it's like in the United States, um, empathy, empathy for other people, definitely. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Before we stop, is there anything mm -hmm. else about this program that you mm -hmm. would like to say? Well, I, the program was wonderful in many areas, in helping people, in um, discovering new ways to handle different health programs, in the people that we met who um, were basically not people who were out for what is life going to give to me, but what can I give to others and um, that, that was a big impact on all of us. It was an idealistic time. I it was. Say. It definitely was. And it's so exciting to be here now and to see some of these people we haven't seen for 38 years. Um, and I thank you very much for You're very welcome.